Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Are the rich greedy? And what's the first step to fight income inequality in the US? Let's find out looking at the economics of inequality, part two. First, let's look at the big picture. Is the value of a citizen living in your country equal to the value of some random person living in another country? Your answer has less to do with patriotism and more to do with your idea of equality. Americans or Canadians or Australians aren't superior. They aren't somehow entitled to live happier lives than other people from other countries. All humans are equal. Yes, Americans and other people living in developed countries have a higher standard of living, but their success boils down to their history, institutions, work ethic, and maybe a little luck. So all people everywhere are fundamentally equal, but as you know, the world is pretty unequal especially when it comes to income. The Occupy Wall Street movement in 2011 caused many Americans to question the morality of income inequality in the US. Their slogan, we are the 99%, encouraged Americans, among other things, to demand that the highest income earners, the 1%, be required to pay higher taxes. The result was a heated battle between different politicians and economists, usually along party lines. Conservatives argued that the rich deserve the fruits of their labor and that taxing them would decrease their incentive to work and hurt the economy. Liberals argue that the rich were already just getting richer and they had a moral obligation to share their income to better the country and to help the less fortunate. The data shows that income inequality in the US is getting worse. But when you look at the entire world, America's actually doing great. For example, to be part of the richest 1% in the US, an American has to earn around $350,000 a year after taxes. But according to an economist at the World Bank, to be part of the world 1%, an individual needs to earn around $34,000 a year after taxes. That ends up being more than the wage of an average American school teacher. Now, you might be thinking income inequality in America has nothing to do with income inequality in the rest of the world. Well, actually it does. We established that earlier. Rewind. Americans or Canadians or Australians aren't superior. They aren't somehow entitled to live happier lives than other people from other countries. All humans are equal. If all humans are equal and rich Americans are morally obligated to share a larger portion of their earnings with poor Americans, then aren't rich humans morally obligated to share their earnings with poor humans? If it's wrong to have incomes concentrated in a small number of hands, then should there be a worldwide tax that redistributes incomes from rich countries to poor countries? How many Americans right now would be okay with paying higher taxes to help the world's poor? I mean, are you? And if you are, how much are you willing to pay? 5% more, 20% more? How much of your income do you deserve to keep? And how much are you obligated to give to the less fortunate? Now you're probably thinking, I deserve to keep a lot because I'm not rich. But if you live in a developed country, then by world standards, you are rich. I mean, you're like super rich. You're in the highest income tax brackets. Many people call the richest 1% of Americans greedy, but the people that want the rich to pay higher taxes to help disadvantage Americans are likely the same people that would fight against a higher tax on them to help disadvantaged people throughout the world. It might seem like I'm picking on liberals, but I'm not. All I'm trying to say is that income inequality can't be blamed on the greed of the richest 1%. Most rich people, whether by American standards or world standards, will always be reluctant to distribute their income to the poor. So what's the solution to income inequality? Now, I'm not saying we should have one, but what if there was a worldwide tax and you had to pay even more taxes than you currently pay? What's the first thing that you'd wanna know? You'd probably wanna know if the tax revenue is actually helping the world's poor or just helping politicians and their friends. I mean, why should you be expected to pay higher taxes if the government's just gonna waste it? A Gallup poll in 2014 asked Americans how many cents of each tax dollar would you say is wasted? For the federal government, it was 51 cents. That's right, the average American thinks the government wastes more than half the money it collects. And even when you break it down to party affiliation, the numbers don't get much better. Republicans say about 59 cents and Democrats say about 42. I mean, that's a serious problem. Rewind. I mean, why should you be expected to pay higher taxes if the government's just gonna waste it? Growing income inequality is a valid concern for many people. But if you truly want less inequality, don't just accuse the rich of not paying their fair share. Demand that the government be more effective and efficient. One solution might be to create a dedicated, well-funded independent commission that's only job is to find and eliminate government waste and hold individuals accountable for mismanaging taxpayer money. And their findings should be a big deal. I mean, even more important than the State of the Union. Right now, it's hard to argue that increasing taxes on the rich is not gonna result in more crony capitalism and bloated bureaucracies. If the rich had good reason to believe that the government was efficiently helping the needy and improving the country, they'd probably be willing to pay higher taxes. I mean, I know I would. So again, if you want less income inequality, then the first step is getting rid of waste in Washington. Then, and only then, can you make an honest and sincere argument that the rich need to pay more taxes. Thanks for watching. Till next time.